you're a fan of the Nintendo GameCube, then you no doubt heard of the Broadband Adapter, an accessory that enabled online functionality and local area network gaming for a handful of titles. With such limited support, this accessory didn't sell well and has now become a pretty rare and expensive collectible. But now, thanks to the incredible work of Extrems and WebHDX, the online GameCube experience is now readily available to the masses, thanks to an inexpensive alternative. So, let's take a closer look. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today, I am truly excited to have the opportunity to show you something that I really think is game changing for the GameCube. This is the ETH to GC network adapter, an affordable alternative to the official Nintendo broadband adapter. So for those of you who may not know, Nintendo released a high speed broadband adapter for the GameCube in October of 2002. The accessory had pretty limited support with only a handful of titles that made use of it. And of course, all the games that boasted online gameplay, such as Fantasy Star, have long since shut down their servers. But there is a healthy community of folks that have set up private servers that allow for continued online support of these games. If you're looking to join these private servers or enjoy LAN-supported multiplayer games like Mario Kart Double Dash, you would need to source an official Nintendo broadband adapter, which have become quite pricey in recent years. But now, thanks to the incredible work of both Extrems and WebHDX, we have an affordable and, more importantly, open source alternative. Now, the magic of what makes this all possible happens within the latest release version of the Swiss Homebrew Utility. It now incorporates broadband adapter emulation via a commercially available and inexpensive Ethernet driver that's been adapted to interface with the GameCube serial port 2. Extrems, the current maintainer of Swiss, developed the software that enables broadband adapter emulation. And WebHDX, the creator of PikaBoot, developed the hardware that adapts the Ethernet driver board to the GameCube hardware. The work of these two incredible individuals has democratized online support for the GameCube, which is absolutely amazing. No longer do you have to source an official Nintendo broadband adapter. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna talk about the hardware that's used for this project how to set up Swiss to enable broadband adapter emulation, go over all of its features, review the pros and cons, and of course provide you with my overall thoughts. Now the piece of hardware at the center of this project is this, the ENC28J60 Ethernet module. As I said previously, this is both inexpensive and readily available, making it a great choice. WebHDX adapted this module with some custom designed PCBs and 3D printed enclosures. He'll be offering two versions of the ETH to GC adapter. There is the light version and the sidecar version. The light version will be the cheaper offering and will interface with the GameCube like this. WebHDX not only will be selling this on his website, but will also be making it open source with everything available on his GitHub for anyone to make on their own. The sidecar version on the other hand has a more refined design that allows the ethernet cable to be aimed towards the rear of the console, as opposed to coming from the side like the light version. Plus, it has the added benefit of being compatible with the Game Boy Player. Now, the light version can technically also be compatible with the Game Boy Player, but will require some work to trim down these pins and replace this capacitor with a more lower profile one. It is a bit more work, but definitely possible. Both these kits will be offered as either fully assembled units or as a DIY kit. Do keep in mind that the DIY version will not come with an ethernet module and you will need to do some light soldering work for the SP2 adapter board. The DIY kit is a super easy thing to build and will allow you to save a few bucks. Here are the prices for each kit. And again, I just wanna reiterate that WebHDX is making the light version open source for those that wanna make one themselves. All right, so that's the hardware side of things, but equally, if not more important, is the software component, which was completely developed by Extrems and integrated into Swiss. So let's discuss how to set things up. Okay, so the first thing you'll need to do is get the latest version of Swiss, which as of the making of this video is version R1622. I'll have a link to where you can grab it down below. Now at the moment, because the SP2 port is occupied with the ETH to GC adapter, you will not be able to load Swiss using a SD to SP2 adapter. Now my particular GameCube is modded with Pico Boot, and instead of using the SD to SP2 adapter, which is what I have been using to load Swiss, 
I'll be instead using a SD Gecko adapter, which utilizes the memory card port. I bought this off of Amazon for a few bucks and it works perfectly. I'll have it linked down below in case you wanna pick one up for yourself. Now there are other ways to load Swiss without the SP2 port, such as utilizing a GC loader, or going old school using the game safe exploit method or an action replay. Anyway, no matter the method of loading Swiss that you use, once you have the latest version up and running on the GameCube, we do need to ensure it's properly configured. All you need to do is go to settings and then navigate to the second page, which is for network settings. Here, you need to enable initiate network at startup, as well as turn on the enable DHCP option. Once that's done, go to the fourth setting page for default game settings to make sure that you have the new emulation broadband adapter option turned on. This is what makes the ETH to GC hardware work with the console. Great, we have now properly configured Swiss to use the ETH to GC adapter. Go ahead and turn the console off and then drop in the ETH to GC adapter into the SP2 port. Plug in your ethernet cable and that's it. Your GameCube is now ready to hop onto the internet. So when it comes to utilizing the ETH to GC adapter, most folks immediately think of online gaming, but there are also some other really cool things we can do. But before we deep dive into all the amazing features, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. If you have an idea for a new mod or want to assemble an open source project, PCBWay provides you with the tools to make them a reality. From 3D printing services in an array of materials, all the way to other services like CNC machining, injection molding, and of course, PCB and flex ribbon fabrication. So when it comes to taking your retro mods to the next level, PCBWay is the place to make that happen. Check out the link in the description for PCBWay to get $5 off your first order. And again, a huge thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. All right, so when it comes to all the features that the eth to gc allows us to do, let's first discuss the big dog in the room online multiplayer. As of right now, the only supported online game for the GameCube is Fantasy Star Online. I was able to set up an account on a private server and play with other people from around the world. I even met up with WebHDX, who is from Poland, so it was really cool to meet him virtually inside the game. It's just wild to think that we're able in 2024 to play a game that Sega and Nintendo stopped supporting all the way back in 2008. Simply amazing. What's also incredible is that the community is patching games that previously had no online functionality. For example, a very talented game modder by the name of Kirby Mimi developed a patch for Mario Kart Double Dash that enables online support. The original game only supported multiplayer through your local area network, but now it's been expanded to online support. WebHDX set up a private server and I'm racing them here on screen. It's a bit clunky to set up, but I am confident this will improve in the future. Now, while his work on Mario Kart is really impressive, Kirby Mimi is also working on an online version of Zelda Twilight Princess. I mean, are you kidding me? You'll be able to do things like create a customized version of a character from the game, and he's even integrating an in-game chat function. The modding community just continues to astonish me with these incredible projects. It looks like that there is an alpha build of the game available for Patreon supporters with a release planned for the summer of this year. So definitely be on the lookout for that. So with a lot of great work going on, I'm excited to see what the future online support will look like once a lot of people start using the eth to gc to hop online with their GameCubes. Of course, in addition to online multiplayer, you can also connect two GameCubes together for playing over your local area network with games that support this functionality. Now, another feature that I found really awesome is that you can actually rip your physical games to your computer over your home network. And doing it is super easy. First, you need to find the IP address of your GameCube when it's connected to your network, which can be located on the network settings page shown here. Then open an internet browser on your computer and type in that IP address, which should take you to a page with two options, dump DVD disc and dump IPL mask ROM. We're interested in dumping the DVD, so go ahead and drop in a game that you wanna rip and then press the dump DVD disc link. You will then be prompted to name the file and select where on your PC you wanna save it. Hit the save button and then it will start to rip your game. Do keep in mind that this is a pretty slow process and it took me about 30 minutes to rip one of the Resident Evil 2 discs. This is just such a cool feature because you can now rip your entire physical library and then simply copy the ISO files to your SD card and play them on your modded GameCube. Just incredible. Now, some of the other things that the ETH to GC allows you to do is remotely backup your save files to your computer 
as well as do some very basic playback of music, which is something that I don't think a lot of people will be doing. Now for those that do GameCube software development for like homebrew applications, you can now also load your files over the network directly from your PC to the GameCube, negating the need to manually copy those files over to an SD card in order to transfer them. I can see this as being a very convenient feature for developers, but it's definitely something that I personally won't be using. Anyway, those are the major features that the eth gc adapter allows you to do. But now, let's take a look at some future capabilities that are in the pipeline. One of the features that will hopefully be implemented is the ability to update Swiss over the internet. I mean, how cool would it be getting a notification within Swiss every time a new version is available, and then be able to download it directly from the internet onto your GameCube? Additionally, WebHDX is looking at other Ethernet modules that will be able to accommodate higher data transfer speeds while still being affordable and readily available. This will actually enable the ability to load game ISO files over the network and utilize projects such as RetroNAS. This means that all your games can be stored on the network, vice locally on an SD card, which does have quite a few benefits. If you haven't heard of the RetroNAS project, Bob of RetroRGB made a great video covering it, which I'll have linked down below. Another potential feature that's been floating around is the idea of integrating an online homebrew store or browser within Swiss, something like what the Wii community has developed with their homebrew channel. Now, another thing that we may see down the road is a new variant of the eth to gc that also incorporates a micro SD card slot so that you can still utilize the SP2 port for external storage. It will probably be a while before we see something like this, but it would definitely be a welcome addition to an already amazing kit. Anyway, now that we covered the features of the eth to gc let's discuss the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, first and foremost, the fact that this project exists and just how easy it is to use is truly a testament of the incredible work done by both Extrems and WebHDX. These guys have both kept the GameCube homebrew scene thriving, and the eth to gc is just another way in which they've contributed to this community, so a huge kudos to them both. Also, arguably the biggest pro is price. Both the DIY and fully assembled versions are really affordable, ranging in price from $15 for a DIY light kit up to $45 for the fully assembled sidecard variant. Also, as I've mentioned previously, WebHDX has made the light version fully open source, so anyone can make one for themselves or iterate on the design and make their own improvements, which is a big pro. Additionally, with the price barrier effectively removed, this will hopefully lead to more people utilizing the online functionality of the GameCube, incentivizing more developers in the community to innovate in this space. Anyway, those are the pros, but now let's go over the cons. And to be honest, I can't think of any. I know I don't say this much, and I always try to comment on at least something, but in my eyes, there are absolutely no cons here. We now have an open source way of bringing the power of the internet to the GameCube. And with more people using this kit, we may see more projects like the online versions of Mario Kart and Twilight Princess Online come to fruition. Making internet functionality more accessible, I believe, will further enhance the space. It's truly an amazing time to be a GameCube fan, and I honestly cannot wait to see what the future looks like for the GameCube online. Well folks, there you have it. An open source alternative to the official Nintendo broadband adapter. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I really think you'll like this one here, so check it out. And as always, thank you all so much for tuning in today, and I'll catch you again next time.